Hi everyone, welcome to Miara Health's Inspiring Journeys, Episode 5. Today we're very happy to have with us Alexandra Schaffenjohn from the French-speaking part of Switzerland. Welcome, Alexandra. Thank you, Sanjana. I'm so happy to be here with you today. So just a little bit of introduction to Alexandra. She's an entrepreneur and a mother of two. She's also a holistic health coach. She helps moms cope with exhaustion and access new energy levels. And her mission is to normalize restorative rest, sleep, and self-care for mothers. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, so just to start off, um, you've had a very complicated relationship with sleep, something most people take for granted. Could you uh, mm. tell us a little bit more about it? Sure. I mean, I have, so I've been a mom for 11 years, but before that, I did have a complicated relationship with sleep, as you mentioned. I Ever since I was a teenager, I struggled with getting really good quality sleep. Mm -hmm. And that was partly because of my stress, my habits, and my appreciation and my beliefs around sleep. And so I, it was only later in life, like around when I became a mom, mm -hmm. um, I think we'll talk more about that, that I really realized how much more deeply this lack of sleep was affecting my life, mm -hmm. much more beyond like just the fact of like waking up exhausted you know, every morning. So mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've carried that with me. Mm -hmm. I carried that past of, you know, complicated relationship with sleep into my mothering journey. Mm -hmm. And things got really intense once <laughs> the mothering sleep deprivation um, came into the picture. Okay, that's really interesting. I mean, I know a lot of new moms can relate to the lack of sleep and things like that. Yeah. But your journey started with that a little bit earlier. But yeah. what was the breaking point for you you would say, like what happened that made you want to change the course of your sleep uh, journey? I think that it happened sort of in three different phases. So because I had this long standing, you know, um, sort of dysfunctional relationship with sleep, it took a bit more time for me to, you know, really change things. But there was a certain point where my older son was around three and a half, four, where the rhythm of our lives was structured so much around the sleep deprivation. You know, I was having a three hour nap every afternoon and the nights were just, um, there were so many wake ups and I couldn't function optimally during the day. And something was nudging me inside to really start to look at this. So um, the first phase was where I started to look at his sleep, you know, in that sort of typical way of like, you know, my sleep as a mom is this way because my child is waking up. And um, and like you said, for a lot of moms who may have slept really well before they became a mom, then that's something that is a definite factor in the sleep journey of a mom. Mm -hmm. But for me, um, because I had already had these sleep you know, um, difficulties, I, I wasn't really aware of how much my own sleep like the way that I related to sleep was affecting it. So I started out looking from the outside in. So what's affecting my sleep from the outside? So I looked at my son's sleep and it took me a little bit of time, but I finally sort of got a bit of um, growth in that area and he started to sleep better. Mm -hmm. Then the next phase was where I was actually in a coaching call with one of my coaches and she was teaching us about standing up for our own sleep, like really, yeah. um, you know, making sure that we prioritize it because that's what allows us to have those beautiful days of growth and, yeah. you know, accomplishment and just feeling amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was the phase where I started to look at myself. So, you know, I had looked already at my son's sleep, but now I needed to look at the way that I was relating to sleep. And this was huge because I had this history with sleep. So I looked at, you know, like I said before, my stress, my rituals and my habits around sleep and especially my beliefs so that was where I started to delve into my own sleep story mm -hmm. and all of the limiting beliefs that I had around sleep for myself because I just sort of you know had so many had gone through so many years where this was just the way it was for me like lack of sleep and me we go together and so you know when my son you know was waking up at night I was just like okay just more of the same you know let's pile it on top so sort of like peeling the layers back. First, it was my son's sleep that sort of brought this to my awareness. So I'm very grateful for that actually. Mm -hmm. And then the next layer was to pull back my own thoughts and experiences around sleep. And then the final layer was in the more professional, um, in a more professional instance where I was finishing up my health, health coaching certificate. Mm -hmm. And we had gotten to the end of the year and I realized that we had only spent like a few hours on sleep 
We had spent like the whole year looking at nutrition and our relationship to food and intuitive eating and our bioindividuality. And I realized that like we had spent a whole year looking at our daytime nutrition, but we weren't looking at sleep as our nighttime nutrition. And that sort of became my philosophy around like really shining a light on this other side of you know, nutrition mm -hmm. that sleep gives us because um, when I started to sleep better, I noticed that all of the good things I was doing for my health during the daytime were exponentially like enhanced, you know, whereas before I had started sleeping well, I was sort of, you know, struggling to, you know, overcome these health, you know, challenges that I was experiencing. And then once I got the sleep um, in place, it really, really like the food I was eating just sort of had maximum potential and I could, I had so much more energy and things were really shifting in the way that I wanted them to. So I would say it was more of like a three phase sort of slow progression. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting that you had to, you know, work it out and see the difference. But uh, yeah. so like, how long did it take you to get back in? Are, are you in a normal rhythm now? And how long did it take you to get to that place? It's uh, something that yeah. you would like to know. So for me, it's a work in progress every day, you know, um, looking at those thoughts, all of those, you know, habits that would have me stay up later. I'm always personally working on that. But I would say that there was a point in 2015, in the springtime where I really had this huge, huge breakthrough. It was right after, shortly after I heard my coach speaking about, you know, the, just it's beyond the importance, but just the crucial, you know, um, the crucial role that sleep plays in our lives. After that, I heard her talk about that. I really did a deep dive for about three months into my sleep and I was really exploring um, how to deepen my relaxation level at nighttime through my nighttime ritual. And I was looking a lot at my sleep story mm -hmm. and all of the different, you know, even from going back to like when I was very little, my mm -hmm. sleep experience is like yeah. really connecting to my best sleep experiences. Where did I sleep the best? Why did I sleep the best? And this was like when I was, you know, the memories were from when I was three or four. Mm -hmm. So I was really like going deep into my story. And so I would say it took me about three months to really experience several nights in a row where I was just waking up so rejuvenated. And like, I had never felt that way since I was probably a kid. And it's just like the best feeling ever. Yeah, that's interesting. So, yeah. But can you tell me a few things that sleep deprivation actually did to you? Or yeah, I mean, for me personally, there was a lot of mental fog. So I wasn't functioning optimally mentally, you know, when I would be, if, if it was at school or if it was, you know, in university or if it was even after when I was working or when I was, you know, raising my, my older son when he was little, I just was sort of checked out, you know, a lot of the time and not not reaching my full potential in in any of those areas really to my to my you know to my own judgment and i feel like you know this is really personal so things that, that my sleep de deprivation affected were digestive things and emotional things so i had a lot of anxiety mm -hmm. um and that will still come back if i don't sleep well yeah. um so really for me it's like my daily medicine okay. my sleep That's and i so have to yeah. yeah i like yeah so um, even like sometimes my, I'll ask my doctor, can you just write it on a prescription? <laughs> Tell me that I need my sleep. And so that's sort of what I like to do with my clients that give a prescription to sleep. Cause you know, in so many instances, we bring things to, um, our doctors and we don't really have the opportunity to speak about sleep. So it's, and it, it plays such a big role in how we, how we feel. So for me, there was digestive issues, emotional issues, mental issues, and just like a lack of enjoyment in the daytime, you know, like yeah. that fighting off the fatigue becomes like your daily, you know, yeah. grind. And it's really, mm -hmm. it's just not fun. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. But like in hindsight, what do you think you could have done differently? Do you think you could have spotted it earlier, do, done something before you had children? Or, yeah. or, or do you think anything could have been done uh, differently? I mean, I think if I, if I went back to like the origins of this, I would say like, you know, maybe if, you know, I had had more parental guidance in this area, it might have, you know, shifted things. But I think that for me, what the whole, this whole experience that I've gone through has taught me is to become more self-caring. Mm -hmm. So 
in, in every way, just choosing to pay attention to my choices in terms of sleep. It's taught me to become more self-caring. And when I don't make those choices that are good for me, then it, it brings my attention to that. And I can sort of tend to it and look at why am I not, you know, taking care of myself in this or that way. So I feel like I've learned so, so much. Like this has been one of the areas of huge, huge growth in my life. But I feel like, um, I mean, I could say, you know, maybe on the outside, somebody could have pointed this out to me, but I just feel like it's been such a growth a growth journey around self-awareness. And um, so, yeah, I don't know if I could have done anything differently, mm-hmm. but I wish I had, you know, yeah. I wish I could <laughs> have spotted this like yeah. way earlier and stopped using sleep as like that badge of honor, yeah. um, you know, of like staying up late because then you're just not productive or at least I wasn't productive during the day Mm -hmm. which so it's sort of like you know you pay for it on one end or the other you know if you sleep early you can be productive during the day Mm -hmm. and if you sleep late and don't have great quality of sleep then usually you're going to have a second wind in the evening and that's when you'll sort of you know Mm -hmm. head into that badge of honor Mm -hmm. zone where you're like working late and you know burning the midnight oil but I guess um yeah, I guess I would just say that if I had if I if I had had the awareness earlier, then I would have you know worked on my son's sleep for sure, and I would have also been working on my own sleep um, earlier. I guess I would have just done it all earlier. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But I think the points that you brought up is sleep is a very important form of self care, and I think a lot of moms out there, a lot of people out there, need to realize that. And sleep yeah, deprivation yeah. has many detrimental effects. So it's like you mm. said, for you personally, it was, you know, your yeah. diet, uh, your digestive issues and things like that. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. that's that's really important. But uh, what would you say is some advice you would give to the moms out there or just the people yeah. out there with sleep deprivation? Would you have some words uh, of wisdom yeah. for them? Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you, it's, each person's situation is different, right? But One thing that I would say is just to connect with how important sleep is for you or how powerful it is for you personally. Mm -hmm. Think back to the last time you had an amazing night of sleep Mm -hmm. and how did you feel in the morning? How did you feel throughout the day? So for moms, you know, how did you feel with your kids? Were you emotionally feeling more stable? Were you more, you know, present? Were you able to play more or dance more or go out more? And Mm -hmm. like, how did that feel to you? And then just know that, your quality of sleep is totally in your, the the power is in your hands. Mm -hmm. And even if your child is still, you know, waking up or, you know, if you have a newborn, this is all totally normal. And this is exactly why as moms, we need to take all the power back that we can in terms of the choices of how we're relaxing before we go to bed, how we're choosing our bedtime. And those things really depend on us versus on our kids. Cause our kids, you know, my kids will still wake up, you know? And so, I need to be working on my sleep every day so that I can maintain that level of being as well rested as possible. Mm -hmm. So just know that, you know, there are so many things that you can do. And one thing I would say is to really look at, so how, how well you slept on that last best night of your sleep, you know, that you've had recently or years ago, whenever it was connect to that and think about how your life would be how you'd feel in your body and in your life if you've slept that well, you know, for let's say four nights out of the week, you know, like on average, you know, you can have several bad nights and still feel really good if you're paying attention to your sleep and sleeping well a few nights a week. Um, And then the other thing is to look at what you're doing before you go to bed. So that nighttime ritual is so crucial in terms of, um, how deeply we can sleep and how well we sleep and mm-hmm. how rested we we feel after the sleep. And even if you wake up in the middle of the night, if you've fallen asleep in that really deeply relaxed space, you will probably feel much, much better mm-hmm. than had you crashed, woken up in the middle of the night and then had to wake up again, you know, in the morning at your wake up time. So looking into the, um, the nighttime ritual. And um, I also have a, a banana tea, a banana tea recipe that I can share with with your audience, if you'd like, it's a great um, homemade tea that you make with banana and banana peel. And it's really a soothing, relaxing drink um, that you can make for yourself. And you can drink it before bed or in the middle of the night when you wake up. And it usually takes like 20 to 30 minutes to get that really sleepy, like heavy yeah. feeling to go back to sleep. So. Yeah, that sounds great. 
Yeah, so I think that was really interesting. You brought up many important points that your sleep is not necessarily to and for a new mom, your sleep is not necessarily linked to your child's sleep, and you know, yeah. sleep is a very good form of self care. One of the best, probably mm-hmm. simplest, also in in yeah. some ways that you can exactly. take care of yourself, uh, manage yourself. So thank you very much for that, and. and you know for just being so candid about uh, your sleep journey and uh, sharing My it pleasure. with our audience and if uh, anybody from uh, our audience wants to get in touch with alexandra we'll leave her uh, um, details in the description box below but thank you once again